goodness. Hey, welcome to Stolen Droids Podcast. <laughs> Hi. I'm sorry. Did you say something? My was hearing that, is like shot well, after that. Well, all right. It was it was it, a titch loud. Just just a little, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, right. I'll I'll survive. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> welcome to Stolen Droids Podcast. Everybody's excited to be here. Not filmed in front of a live studio audience, but we'll pretend. We'll pretend, yeah. I mean, I've I've got one. What are you guys talking about? If the Flintstones can have laughter, so can we. <laughs> I think we're funnier than the Flintstones. <laughs> Sorry, that was the wrong button. I meant this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's that's a thing of beauty right there is what that is. Uh, boy, we're a having- new toy for Jake. <laughs> I I said that to my kids when I opened it. I said, Hey, I got a new toy. And my four year old was like, That's not a toy. I said, You're right. It is a what did I say? An expensive piece of recording equipment or something like that. And so then when I said it later to one of his siblings, he said, It's not a toy, it's an expensive piece of recording equipment. I'm like, all right. That's awesome. <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that works. Cool. Yay. Speak, uh, since uh, Colin's not here, you've got to fill in the void. Yeah. Colin, Colin is not here tonight. So, oh, <laughs> I, 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 wow. Standing ovation almost. Okay. Wow. You lit him up last time. Yeah. We're here. And, well, we all kind of did, but yeah. you especially yeah. lit him up <laughs> and last time. Uh, the last episode that Marley and I did with Craig, uh, we were nice. We didn't kill anybody. We didn't light anybody up because yeah. I forgot. Well, and now here we are back to things, how they are. It's, it's nice to see the universe back in order. Yeah. Well, Craig's a, a classy guy. He's not going to light anybody up on the air. So it's, you know, yeah, a touch of class to the show, which we really <laughs> desperately need. We really do desperately need that, especially when I'm the one that's that's ho- doing the primarily hosting. <laughs> I mean, we weren't going to say it. So, yeah, well, I, I know who I am. But Good. speaking of Craig, if you want to hear him maybe light somebody up one of these days, he's going to be on Stolen Droids Network coming up here pretty quick. He is, yeah. Yay! Memory Wipe. May 3rd is when that will premiere. We're excited. It's going to be a fun show. Yes, it will be. It will be. We're, we are happy to have him as part of the Stolen Droids family. Yeah, and, the, and his show that he's putting together is unlike anything we've got on the network right now. So I <laughs> fun and exciting and he's put a lot of work in on it behind the scenes so he really has he really has i've i've done i don't know how many podcasts over the last decade and dudes put in a ton of work compared to anything i've ever done and i thought i've put in a lot of work behind the scenes on some of these but no dude it's going to be an amazing show you definitely don't want to miss it yeah for sure so we're excited to have him aboard the stolen droids train um also speaking of may we have utah remote con 2 coming up starting may 10th we're just going to get all, all of the announcements out of the way at the beginning so we don't have to forget about them at the end it'll be nice. yeah that works so so may is stolen droids month basically put it on your calendars that's right it'll be epic stolen droids month with a new podcast and utah remote con 2 which is going to be two weeks this time around because which me I just week. realized two. it's remote con two and it's <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. This is not a pattern. I don't think we're going to do like Utah remote con three and do three weeks because that Why would not? be a lot of fun <laughs> and a lot of work and people would probably cry and have mental breakdowns. In all honesty, when we talked about doing remote con two, uh, we kind of did it jokingly saying it was going to be bigger, better, uh, and remoter thinking that by this point things wouldn't be as remote and we wouldn't need to do as much virtually. And I think that's probably the case, 
but conventions and things haven't come back yet. By the time we'd be able to do Utah Remote Con 3, conventions should be back. Like, we should be back at Fan X. Let's then. hope. I hope so. I, I I'm really sure we hope. will. I, yeah. I like, you know, down here in Texas, and I think I've seen in Utah as well, but things are really starting to get back to normal, which is a really nice feeling. I just, yeah. I, I like it. Yeah, it depends on where you're at here in Utah, but... But yeah, that's it's getting there. It was weird. We went to uh, Vegas on a trip, and we went the weekend of the Final Four, and it was also Easter weekend, and it was really, really busy in Vegas, like busier than I thought it was going to be. I had heard that crowds were starting to come back a little bit, but it was like packed. And like the whole city wasn't prepared for how packed it was. Like the infrastructure just wasn't prepared, but um, yeah. it felt. Well, I was in new Orleans last week. Same thing. Yeah. And it felt, it felt semi-normal. Like, yeah, you had to wear a mask inside the casinos and, and the hotels. And in, anytime you went in any place, but like walking around the strip, you didn't see a lot of masks and there were so many people and it just, it felt more normal. And then the other day I was walking through the mall in Salt Lake city and they had a lot of the stores still had like pick up outside of the store where you could come and, and pick stuff up or they had lines for people to line up when it's busy and things like that. And I thought, okay, so we are still, like you said, Marley, it depends on where you are as far as how back to normal things have gotten. So well, and I went um, this past weekend, I went to St. George, which for those of you who don't know where that is, it's Southern Utah, like Southern, Southern Utah. And it is, uh, as of right now, it's a, it's a low um, COVID transmission area, which is weird to me because I've been living in an area that was high and then it's now medium. And so then to go down to low, I was like, what's this going to be like? And sure enough, like, restaurants and stores um most of them are still like hey wear a mask please but there were a couple of restaurants i'm not going to name any specific ones but they were some that were like masks are optional like mm -hmm. we're like our our employees and even and our patrons like if you want to wear a mask cool but we're not requiring it and like they had like signs that like said that and i was like well that's cool but it's also just it's weird yeah. It's really weird to me. And it's just like, I don't know, I guess in my opinion, my personal opinion, it's just like, why even have the sign? Just like, just don't have any signs up. Like if people want to wear masks, I guess you can wear them, but don't like be all like, oh yeah, they're, they're optional. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, yes or no. Yes or no. Come on people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just interesting. Yeah. And I think it really comes down to now, like what you feel like your risk level is. And, you know, when we, when I say we traveled to Las Vegas, we had both gotten um, both doses of the vaccine before we had traveled. So we were both fully vaccinated. We felt like for us, it was a risk that we were willing to take. And you've got to know where your risk levels are. And that's true. I think we're getting to a transitional phase where there's going to be different levels of risk. And, like and just, comfort yeah and comfort and like don't i don't know don't be dumb like don't be angry and don't be and don't be rude yeah exactly yeah you don't need to be an a-hole to people that are yeah. doing stuff that you don't personally agree with yeah. exactly yeah and that just is good general life advice <laughs> what <laughs> it's true like yeah. it is good advice. Any advice that starts with don't be an a-hole. Like that's really good advice. Just generally speaking. Yeah, it really is. It really is. But that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> no, this is like a, I, I don't even know how to segue into that. So, <laughs> well, before you had mentioned the Flintstones having a laugh track, and I was like, Oh, that's a good segue into our topic this week. Uh, and then uh, nobody took advantage we I just, tried, but then we went in a different direction. And it yeah, was we failed. We failed. <laughs> so Marley's going to a visual segue here by putting up animated April on our screen here. And that's what we're talking about this month, this animated stuff. Uh, we've talked about Beauty and the Beast. Um, 
and today we're talking about favorite Saturday morning cartoons. Hooray. Yes. And Saturday morning cartoons for us, I mean, we've got a few different decades going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, as as was established in our last episode, Marley's like, <laughs> I don't know, 30 years younger than I am. That's not true. <laughs> and, and, well, it's like 77. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like, that's why I had to move to Texas because, you know, Arizona was full. <laughs> and... And, you know, I'm not going to Florida. And since I'm old, that's what we got to do is got to go somewhere where it's warm. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's true. Okay. Although I think you typically are supposed to. Well, I guess a lot of people go to Florida and it's not a dry heat. No, <laughs> it's not. Although uh, most of Texas, well, parts of Texas aren't dry heats either. Although there are some. Texas is the size of a, like a medium sized country. In yeah parts of the world so it's got all yeah. sorts of conflicts. we got it all we got a freeze warning tomorrow night i mean it's it's like oh, living goodness. in utah so but of course that's not where i live but that's how vast texas is it's as vast as the saturday morning cartoons yeah so we do have different decades that are represented here and i think it's an interesting topic saturday morning cartoons because my kids have no idea like they know what cartoons are, but like this concept of Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. Is, it's all on demand now. Yeah. Like, I don't know that anybody does Saturday morning cartoons anymore, except maybe like the cartoon network because they do cartoons all the time. Yeah. yeah. Like a specific program. Yeah. With like, like Hey, Hey, from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. These are the list of shows, and it's mm -hmm. specifically Saturday morning cartoons. Like, yeah, I don't think anyone really has that. Yeah, no, I don't think so. When I was a kid, you'd get up at six or seven in the morning on a Saturday, and all of the networks, like all of them, ABC, CBS, Fox, they all had some kind of kids' entertainment on in the mornings from, like you said, from like seven to 11 a.m. and it was the major networks. It was so foreign to what we see now. Like you said, yes. it's all on demand and nobody does it anymore, but that was a highlight. Yeah. And it's hilarious that you say all of the networks and you listed Fox in there. Yeah. Because I remember when I only had three networks to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Fox became a thing and yeah. Yeah. But for, for me growing up, I can't not talk about Fox Kids uh, on Saturday morning because some of the best cartoons oh, for sure. for, for my time were on Fox. Um, and so it, it would be hard not to mention them because I think I remember like I think Batman, the animated series was on there. X-Men. Yep. Those like, two are actually some of the ones that I put. I, I put a little list together and those are two that I would say are among the best Saturday morning cartoons ever, even though I was a little bit older at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean the cartoon that I had to get up for every Saturday, 6 a.m. was Smurfs on NBC. Smurfs. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I mean, and I, I remember get so pissed off. If I overslept, if I didn't wake up at 6 a.m. Oh, crap. I woke up at 630. It's over. Yeah. Oh, that's like that is a horrible way to start your Saturday morning when you yeah. oversleep and miss Smurfs or whatever. In my case, it was Smurfs. But then, you know, I, I'd flip channels and I remember and some of these just hit Disney Plus, but like Ewoks and and droids. Um, those were 1984, 85, something like that. Um, had to be, I mean, Ewoks had to be 85, 86 because Return of the Jedi came out 85. 83. So, was it 83? You're right. 83. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and Marley's like, oh, yeah, I totally remember that. Ha ha ha. <laughs> no, I was not even born. <laughs> Yes, we know Marley. That is an established fact. You are a youngin. But I remember but I'm not you know, that young. 
I mean, come you're... on. For a little while, I was the youngest in stolen droids, but then you added a few of people who let us in who are younger than me. So, yes. <laughs> That's true. And and we have one person on let us in. I'm not going to say who it is, but you look at him and you don't know if he's 13 or 33. I mean, it's just, it's weird. He oh my knows goodness, who he yes. Is because I said <laughs> that to him, but I'm not going to call him that in public. Uh, but I mean, you'd get up in the morning, you'd sit down on the couch with your bowl of cereal, corn pops or whatever, big bowl, like half the box yeah. in the one bowl. Corn pops. Oh, yes. Or, or Lucky or Charms. Honey Smacks. Or um, uh, Cocoa Pebbles or Honey Nut Cheerios. And Lucky the bowl cereal, like peb fruity and Cocoa Pebbles were some of my favorite cereals ever. Like they were so awesome. Oh, I don't do fruit cereal. I don't do fruit candy either, but that's neither here nor there. I was always cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, though. Cocoa Puffs are awesome. Oh, yes. Cocoa Puffs, yes. Cocoa Puffs are awesome. Yep. And and if you didn't have Cookie Crisp, but you had Oreos, you just do that instead, and there you go. Uh, or Reese, Reese's <laughs> Puffs was always like a treat. Like if my mom ever got that, it was the, like the best thing. And especially, yeah, like sitting there getting ready to watch Saturday morning cartoons and you got yep. your Reese's Puffs and you're like, it's going to be a great weekend. <laughs> yes. Unless you miss Smurfs because you oversaw. Oh, yeah. Because Smurfs, because I don't get why Smurfs was a thing, but it was huge. Oh, like, it was massive. The Smurfs. I, I think when I was younger, I know I had a little ride on toy that was shaped like a, a Smurf that I rode on all the time. And I had a bunch of Smurfs little toys and things like that. When I was really, really little, I don't understand why it was so big and so popular, but it was, it was huge. Like a yes. cultural phenomenon. The, the figures, I mean, everything, it was, it was massive and it went for like nine seasons, I think. Yeah. It was uh, fine for like from like 81 to 1990 or something like that. So it's not like it was not a good show that had staying power. It was, did it was they, freaking amazing. Did, did they have, do they have a new, I mean, when I say newer version, I mean, I don't mean within the last decade, but like, do they have a newer version since that so, time that you're talking about Zoner? Cause like, I feel like, I feel like I've seen Smurfs, but Obviously, that was not playing when I was watching Saturday morning cartoons, but like yeah. I have seen like Smurfs they've, here and there. They've made three movies. Uh, that I think too. More sequels yeah. to each other. And then like two of them, there was a first one and a sequel. And then the third one, I don't think is a sequel as much because it's a little bit different. But, but yeah, they've made a, a few movies. I don't know that they've done a new cartoon. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe. I didn't really there get into was, it. Uh, in in 2017, it was announced that uh, some Belgian companies were producing an updated Smurf series that had CG animation. Uh, and it looks like it is supposed to come out in sometime 2021. Oh. So. Yeah, I'm talking um, like a lot earlier than yeah. obviously right now. And they're say, going to be 11 minutes long instead of the 23 or whatever they were. So I will say that as big as Smurfs was here in the U S it was still a big, so 20 years ago I lived in Germany and this was, you know, a decade after the last Smurfs show was on TV here and Smurfs were still a big culture. Oh yeah. In Germany. So I think Europe, it's a bigger deal than it was even here. So yeah, oh, interesting. for sure. For sure. And, and like comics, like Asterix, the Gaul and things like that. Those are huge over in Europe. Mm -hmm. We're over here. Like everybody's like, give me Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> Cause we like our Japanese imports. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's the best of the crop, I guess. So what were the cartoons that you guys had to get up for on Saturday mornings? I mean, Jake, you mentioned a couple Batman and X Men. Were there others? Um, I'm trying to think. Those were the two that stood out to me the most. Um, when I was really, really young, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was one that I had to catch every week. 
Um, that was, I think that was the first one that I really remember being into. Um, uh -huh. I know I was into Thundercats, but I don't necessarily remember. Like, I know I had all the toys, so I know I was really into them. But I, but like <laughs> the one that still stands out to me is, is Ninja Turtles every week. We had to make, yeah. make time for that one for sure. And that was, I mean, obviously that was a huge cultural thing too, but I just, I love that show. And it's so bad. Like yeah. I watch it now and it's not good at all, but I loved it when I was a kid. <laughs> I actually have all of the original episodes. Uh, like, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's horrible by today's standards, but thankfully it, I think it holds up a lot better than some shows like masters of the universe. Yeah. Uh, of the that universe. doesn't hold up at all. Yeah, the original He-Man series is really not good. Like, it's fine for its time, but it yeah. was a show that was made to sell toys. That was the whole purpose of he -Man. Literally. And you can tell that there wasn't as much thought put into it. And I hate to say that because the people that were stuck with writing it and putting it together, like, they weren't brought in as top-notch writers or anything like that. And they did the best they could, but it, it's just not good. The yeah, animation was not good, but it had staying power, though. Yeah, and you can see where they cut corners. I actually asked one of the animators about, like, why is the rock that always falls a different color? You always know the one that's going to fall. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he explained it to me that it was it was because of budget. They just didn't yeah. have the money. And so they'd reuse stuff. And if it didn't match, it didn't match. And I, wow, that's okay. That's honest. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, but one, yeah. Another one that I remember watching all the time was the real Ghostbusters. Oh yeah. Um, which was just awesome. Um, and it, and it had to be the real Ghostbusters because I don't know if you remember this, this honor. But, so there was the Ghostbusters movie that came out, uh -huh. and there was a cartoon version of it. But somebody went and made like another company went and made another cartoon called just Ghostbusters that had with the no monkey. Yeah, with the monkey, and it was weird and bizarre. It had nothing to do with the movie. Yeah. So when they did finally get the animated series up. They called it the real Ghostbusters so yep. that people would know the difference between the ripoff show and the oh, one okay. on the movie. <laughs> I never thought about it like that, but that's kind of like a, a slap in the face to, to the Ghostbusters. Because it's yeah. like, you're an imposter. We are, we are the legit Ghostbusters here. Well, the thing and is, turned on, if somebody's like, yeah, we're going to watch Ghostbusters, and they turned on the other cartoon you're like this is crap like what am i watching where's vankman where's ray yeah. where's egon like what the heck so yeah uh, for I, sure i love that cartoon that was one that i watched all the time too had a bunch of the toys oh memories what about <laughs> Well, I, uh, there was, I mean, I, there were so many different cartoons that I watched growing up, but the specific Saturday morning cartoon segment that I remember the most is Disney's one Saturday morning. <laughs> I Ooh. still, I yeah. know it. It's yeah. ingrained in my brain. And sure enough, like I was looking up yeah. on online, I was trying to remember like, all the different shows and everything. And it actually had a link to the original intro and I watched it and holy crap. Like I remember every single little thing from that little animation. <laughs> wow. It's insane. And I, um, yeah, I, so just to give you guys a little bit of perspective here. So, cause it actually shows on, um, I'm looking at the uh, Disney fandom wiki page. For, for one Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And it actually shows like the um, the series name and then the time period that they were running or they were airing. Uh -huh. So, cause a couple of the ones that were, um, that really stood out to me that I remember the most is Recess and right. Doug and The Weekenders. Mm -hmm. 
And they were all running between about 1997 to 2002. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's kind of yeah. when, like, that was, like, the peak of my, like, Saturday morning cartoons was right there in, like, let's say 1998, 1999. <laughs> it's funny that you I up. actually, oh, I, I was going to say, I actually tried to get my little girls and, and my 11-year-old to appreciate the Saturday morning cartoon. So I woke up with them one Saturday morning and we went downstairs and turned on recess on Disney plus. Yes. And I said, okay, this is, this is a Saturday morning cartoon. Let's sit down and watch it. And they just wanted to flip to Netflix or whatever, because that's <laughs> what a three and a four year old do. But um, yeah, recess was amazing. Recess, I mean, Loved that was recess. such a good show. Oh, yes. And that one actually does hold up still. That one's still fun to watch. Really? Yeah. It is. Yeah, I haven't I haven't gone back and watched any of these, but but just, yeah, I I just I had so I had so much fun. What, Jake? I'm sorry. What well, you said recess, Doug, and what was the third one that you mentioned? Um, Weekenders. Okay. Was another one. And then also uh, Pepper Ann was another one. Um, I also really liked Hercules, the animated series. Um, Cause like, I loved Hercules, the movie, one of my all time favorites. And so when they had like the animated series, that was kind of fun. There was even a, okay. So they had like these like segments in between, um, shows or maybe there were there was probably commercials i'm i don't really remember yeah, but there were there was there was a specific segment that they had genie from aladdin so robin williams and it was um the segment was called great minds think for themselves and like still to this day i remember like the little intro to that like i even have like quoted it before and i like kind of look around to be like does any, did anybody like catch that? Like, does anyone know what that's from? And I don't know if they do, but I'm going to tell you guys. And I'm curious, you, you probably won't, but maybe some listeners will, but the start of it is like, cause they, he uses like genies, like funny little, like, um, like when he's like tiny kind of voice and it's like, uh, it's like great minds, um, think alike. And it's like, no, great minds think for themselves. And like, that's like how it always started. And then he went into this, like, I don't know, like some sort of segment, like some sort of like teaching moment, um, uh -huh. like a, like some history or like some other uh, awesome people from history kind of thing. Um, but I just, it's so funny how you just like remember those little tiny, like audio bits uh -huh. and they just, they stick with you. And um so well, I'm really after curious these messages, we'll be that. right back. Dude, I was just thinking of that. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Like, every time yeah. After these messages, we'll be right back. I still yep. think my kids <laughs> know what that even means. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned Doug in there because Doug's an interesting one being on the Disney's one Saturday morning because Doug started out as a Nicktoon. It started That's out right. as a Nickelodeon property. Um, oh, and then I forgot about that. After Nickelodeon canceled it uh, and brought it back on the one Saturday morning. And I think they made mm -hmm. a movie and things like that. So Doug's an interesting Disney property because they that was originally a Nickelodeon property. And um, this was back. Nickelodeon was funny because Disney was doing their shows and their cartoons and everything in the Typical Disney fashion, always a little bit more wholesome, a little bit more family friendly. And Nickelodeon came along and they're like, ah, we're going to be rude and crude. And they had like Ren and Stimpy and Ren and Stimpy. Right? And I, I don't know that those were on Saturday morning. I feel like they were on it like Saturday night. It was like the opposite of Saturday morning. It was like, you put these on at night because they're edgy. And, and Doug was one of them. And he, it, like, Doug was not edgy at all. Like it just wasn't an edgy cartoon like the others, and it just didn't fit in with the other yeah. Nick. Teams. So, yeah, I I think it's funny though that you mentioned that because I remember going to my aunt's house, and I I think I was in high school, uh, and maybe just going into high school, and I remember she had cable and we didn't, 
And so I was able to watch Ren and Stimpy, but it was on Sunday morning that I watched it. Okay. Maybe it was a Sunday morning thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I remember sitting there watching Ren and Stimpy. And I, I've always had a soft spot for the original uh, Ren and Stimpy just because I think it was brilliant, but of course I would. So. Yeah. We weren't allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy at our house. I didn't, I didn't like it. I remember watching it and I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go back to uh I don't know, Lizzie McGuire or something. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I, and, and the one Saturday morning that, that Disney did, you know, that was shortly after um, Disney acquired ABC. And so that was kind of their way of building on, Hey, this is our synergy. We are, yes. Know, ABC is a Disney company. Now let's put some of our property on there. And um, it, it was great. And I think that's also the transition from, what we normally saw on Saturday morning cartoons to something different, like cartoons changed and they became more kid centric, like recess, for example, all the characters are kids, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the characters are kids. But like, I grew up watching cartoons where everybody was grown up, like ghostbusters, the X-Men, GI Joe, GI Joe. And like, it was like these heroes that you wanted to grow up and, and B and there wasn't as yes. much the, the um, and, and a lot of it was like fantasy based too, like Smurfs, for example, they weren't necessarily grown up, you know, warriors or whatever they were Smurfs, but it was still this fantastical world. And then you get into something like recess where that's much more like, obviously there's a lot of fantasy involved in recess, but it's yes. still kind of based in a, in a more realistic world, even though yeah. it's still a cartoon. And, yeah, and I, cartoons are like that. I, I like how you said, you know, the Smurfs, you know, they weren't warriors or anything. It's a bunch okay. of half naked dudes running around. I mean, that's and one girl and one. Well, I think they had three actually over the course, okay. but oh, um, still it ain't right. No, looking, looking back with adult eyes, it ain't right. You want to <laughs> looking back on something with adult eyes, watch the first episode of Thundercats. Where they're all just walking around naked. Oh yeah, fine. Yeah, you're like, what is going on here? I mean, you don't. It's not weird, Marley. You don't see anything. Well, but, of course not, but still. Yeah, it it's was, not like Chitara has genitals. I mean, come on, that would no, be. I don't know. Wrong. I haven't. I've never seen Thundercats. If you have never seen Thundercats, I would never recommend going and watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Although they did do a, a reboot on on. Cartoon yes. Network, I think, that was really good. I enjoyed that a lot. The reboot on Cartoon Network was much better than the original. You go back, though, and you watch the original. If you've never seen it and it holds no nostalgic value for you whatsoever, you will not make it through the first 10 minutes. No. It's not good. Isn't no. there a... There's a character named Starscream, right? That, that would that be right? Transformers. Is that Transformers? The Starscream? Yes. Yeah. I thought it was Thundercats. No. No. Cause uh, there's a there's a YouTuber, um, I don't know if you do you guys know who Olin Rogers is on no. YouTube. Oh my goodness, I need to send you guys some links. He is hilarious and he tells like really funny stories. But anyways, he has a cat named Starscream, and I thought I I swear he said it was. He, I remember he talked about Thundercats, but it could have been Transformers. I promise, Starscream is Transformers. Okay, well I believe you guys because <laughs> yeah. I must have just misheard him. But anyways, he has this, he had, well, had, mm, sad, um, had a cat named Starscream. And I actually have, he's passed away since then, because <laughs> it's been a few years, and I actually have a t-shirt with Starscream on it holding the Captain America shield. Anyways, different story. Owen Rogers is cool, though. You guys need to look him up. Yeah, Starscream was like uh, Megatron's right-hand man. In yeah. The oh, he was kind of a whiny punk, though. Well, yeah, all the Decepticons were. Uh, well, I, I liked Soundwave. Yeah, like ice cream. Yeah. Hey, Soundwave was cool. Soundwave was cool because if you got the Soundwave toy, he, he turned into a little cassette player is what Soundwave would turn into. And, and a cassette for for you, Marley, is what we I used to listen to music it. on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But if you had the start, I had the Soundwave toy. And he yes, I did too. And you would open up his little case that the cassette would go in. 
and a cassette would be in there and it would transform into like a little bird or something that he would use as one of his little spies that would go out and yep. buy for him and stuff like that. And it was just really cool. The transformer toys were some of the coolest toys ever made. And we're not talking about toys, but they were really cool. That, <laughs> that was back when, when Megatron was still a gun. Right. And I never understood how you could have this giant robot and he transform into a gun that a person could hold. It's like that's yeah. shrinking that, defies the laws of physics it's not how that's not how science works it's how it works but it was a fun. yeah it was a cartoon so i didn't care and it was a fun cartoon to watch yeah transformers was a fun one uh i was never allowed to watch gi joe so my mom had why well because Let's, i'll tell you why violence well, not violence necessarily. It was gun violence. My mom oh. had very strict rules about watching shows with guns in them uh, because of the violent piece and, and everything. So I, Thundercats, fine. Ninja Turtles, fine. Transformers was okay because they were laser guns, which aren't real. Oh. That was fine. But G.I. Joe was not okay because of the guns. And I give her a hard time about this still to this day. I because it was supposed to be like, you know, you, she wanted me to learn like not to use guns and be violent. And I said, so all I learned was it's okay to kill people as long as you use like swords or a nunchuck. Yeah. Like just oh, don't. Use yeah. And so she loves it when I say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if I recall correctly, the guns in GI Joe also shot lasers. Yeah. But it was too close because they were in the, army and it was too- okay okay did did y'all watch muppet babies oh my god no yes. no uh, that was one that i enjoyed a lot as well because i've always loved the muppets and so muppet babies was a good one for me but they've redone it mm-hmm. and it's now on disney plus i don't know where else it is some disney channel probably somewhere yeah i think it used to be on disney junior maybe but m- my three and four year old will sit and watch that for hours. They love the new Muppet babies. Yeah. Yeah. My, my son got way into the Muppet babies and his confusion was he thought that baby Kermit in the Muppet babies, when he saw grown up Kermit, he thought that grown up Kermit was like baby Kermit's dad, and like grown up mm. was baby Fozzie's dad. And I'm like, no, that's them as baby. He was all, for a while he did walk around after he would tell a joke and say waka waka that doesn't even rhyme what oh it's from the it's from the theme song (laughs) my kids will say that it's awesome oh my goodness yeah (laughs) but yeah muppet babies was one that i i loved as a kid um and even the new one is really good I think they've done a good job with the new one, uh, which a lot of times isn't the case when they reboot something like that. And considering Disney's struggle with the Muppets since they purchased them, uh, it it amazes me that that they've done it so well. Yeah, they've gotten Muppet Babies right. Um, Yeah. Although, really, when you think about it, the Muppet Babies series doesn't make sense. Because here they are all in the same nursery. They've known each other since they were babies. But then you watch the Muppet movie and how they all met. And they're all strangers. Which one's the truth? (laughs) Which one is the truth? Oh, what is canon? What is canon? What what is canon? Is Muppet Babies (laughs) canon? Or is it Legends? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? So so I I do remember... Like when I would be watching this one Saturday morning on the Disney Channel, which I could have sworn was on ABC. It was, but was it on ABC? Yeah, but it but it was Disney. Yep. Yeah. So okay, okay. So I'm not crazy. Yep. No, Disney but like ABC in the '90s and acquired the network, and then they started putting their programming on ABC. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and but I also remember like because I mean they're. Of course, there were shows that you didn't care for, you know, as you're, you know, watching these for hours and hours. So I would switch to other channels. And I think my biggest go-to was Arthur. 
I loved Arthur so much. And then there were other times, like, especially as I, like, kind of got older, I would ironically, like, because I knew I hated it, but I would be like, I just want to, I just want to watch part of it because I'm just curious. I would watch Teletubbies, you guys, ironically. And it was so dumb. And, like, sometimes I'd watch it with, like, friends and we'd be like, why are we watching this? This is stupid. And it's just, looking back on it, it's like, we were dumb, A, and B, that show is terrifying. Yeah. Oh, I don't for know sure. how they got away with doing Teletubbies for as long as they did. Yeah. It's a it's a weird show. Teletubbies. Was it a super long time? Is it still around? Are they still making it? I I hope I don't not. Know, and I, I don't want to. They, they all need to be filled with fire. Yes. As far as and that little, they all need. Yeah. So weird. I did not like it, but yeah. I loved Arthur because <laughs> that was on that was on PBS. Arthur's Arthur good. Was always a good one. Um, I think for me, the the show that was probably like my Teletubbies was probably Barney. My sibling. I all- loved Barney when I was like little, very little. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, you were probably <laughs> the right age. I was older, and I was like, this show is the worst. Like, what are we watching? Oh my goodness. It was bad. But I know looking back terrible. on it now, it's like Barney is a little problematic. <laughs> oh man. And maybe so, I don't know. So, just, Jake, ugh. you're a wrestling fan. Did you yeah. I, do you remember Hulk Hogan's rock and uh, wrestling? Yeah. yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, yeah, it had Hulk Hogan, the giant dog. Fantastic. It had the guy with the rubber bands in his ear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Captain Lou Albo. Yep. Uh, and uh, Brad Garrett actually did the voice of Hulk Hogan on that. Fun fact. Really? Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Yeah. Before, yeah, before but, his everybody loves Raymond days. Yes. Very much before. Because that, that went like from <laughs> September 85 to October of 86. And so, I mean, that yeah. wasn't around long, but oh boy, was that awesome. If you were a wrestling fan in the eighties and which kid wasn't, let's just be honest. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing is it worked so well because during that time, if you watched wrestling, it was very cartoony anyway. Yes. Oh, totally. Making it a cartoon just totally worked. Um, Yeah, totally. Speaking of uh, professional athletes, which obviously Hulk Hogan is a professional athlete. Um, do you remember there was a show and I can't remember what it was called. It might've been like all stars or something like that, but it had Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, Wayne and- Gretzky. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. That I was, they were like super space heroes. jam. Are you yeah. talking about space jam? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, there was a cartoon. Uh, I'll find the name of it, but it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was, it was great. But speaking of space jam, Marley, uh, Bugs Bunny has been on Saturday morning cartoons forever. I think the first yes. Saturday morning Bugs Bunny cartoon debuted in like 19 something. And they like revamping it. So, you know, you get Bug and Tweety Hour and then Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner show and uh, Bugs Bunny and yeah. Roadrunner Hour, and I mean, they just I, it, it bounced between remember, ABC, NBC, yeah. and CBS. I do remember and watching it just, Bugs Bunny and like Roadrunner and uh, um, Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Like, I also remember watching those shows a lot growing up. I don't know if it's necessarily Saturday mornings cartoons, you know, but like, I do, yeah, I do remember those quite. Oh, and Looney Tunes. I loved Looney Tunes. <laughs> like Looney Tunes or Tiny Tunes? Yes. Oh, okay. Because Looney Tunes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I just. Looney Tunes was like Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and then Tiny Tunes was like Buster Bunny and. I, I'm uh, sure I watched both, but like, I don't know. Yeah. I remember both. Tiny Tunes, uh, Animaniacs. Yeah, all- Animaniacs, that one too. Yeah. Yes. All of those. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it that was, was that was good fun. Yeah. And, and it was that, just that some, was a lot of fun. 
and it was just something special because like Saturday mornings belong to the kids. Like it was our time to watch whatever we wanted and grownups just knew it. Like they were busy sleeping in and they loved it because, you know, they could sleep in because we were watching cartoons and whatever. So it was true. It was awesome. I knew like it would go until about 10 o'clock and then at 10 o'clock it seemed like that's when uh, like Power Rangers would start and like the other kind of live action um, cartoony shows that I like at all. But or the sports stuff like on the major networks like NBC and ABC like that's when like golf would start was 10 o'clock you're like, oh, well, <laughs> golf I'm done with, with this so oh are we losing yeah. zoner oh I, back. i'm back oh there we go i'm back my network know. just crapped out on me for a minute sorry oh, you're good <laughs> yeah but, I... but yeah jake 10 o'clock you knew that it was time to do your saturday morning chores once 10 o'clock hit because there was yep. nothing good on tv anymore <laughs> And it sucked. And, oh, yeah. And you're like, That's... oh, wait, Fat Albert's on. Let's watch Fat Albert. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Fat Albert. Yeah. I... I remember that show. I I watched that, too. But, yeah, I remember, like, yeah, around 10 o'clock, it was usually, like, uh like that's usually when my mom would kind of come in and check on me and be like, okay, time for chores. Like you're done. (laughs) There was definitely that kind of time limit on there. Um, and it all, there would always be like some sort of debate. I'm sure I I know about like, Oh mom, just one more show. And then I'll, on, then I'll start, I'll do my chores immediately. But like, like, Oh, there's a recess came back on and they're doing another episode or I don't know, whatever it was, but I, there would always be that bargain with your, with your mom. You're just like, come on, please. <laughs> one more. And then I'll go yeah. to the bathrooms. <laughs> My younger brother, he's, I'm three years older than he is. He, he said, you said bargains and this is, this reminded me, or they're doing another episode and it reminded me of this. He always wanted to watch something. I don't remember what it was but I didn't want to watch it. Mm -hmm. And so when he wasn't paying attention, I'd get up and change the channel and he'd come back and I'd say, Oh, well they're watching this on the show that you like. And he was gullible enough to fall for it. And so, (laughs) so all of a sudden like Scooby-Doo, the pup named Scooby-Doo is watching, I don't know, Smurfs or whatever. And Oh my goodness. Two different times, but you get the point. Uh, yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> I love, I love everything that you just described because it just doesn't work in today's world at all. The fact that there was, like the the idea that you had to watch on the same TV. Like my kids, if they want to watch something, it's like I'm going to grab this iPad and you're going to grab the TV and you're like yep. just watch on whatever. But then also when you said when he wasn't looking, I had to get up and go change the channel. Like, get up <laughs> and change the channel. I mean, you look at TV today, they don't even have buttons on the front of them. Kids wouldn't even know what to do without the remote. I know. Or we had a lot it. of them, you just like say, hey, ch- go to channel or hey, go to Netflix and start whatever. Yeah. I don't even know. Doug or whatever's on there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you don't even say channel 47. Like, there are channels anymore (laughs) i mean there are but who has cable (laughs) yeah not enough people to keep the cable industry happy that's for sure (laughs) but yeah we've actually my wife bought a tv a few years ago and they couldn't find the remote for it like my i i seriously go through roku remotes about every three months because we buy roku tvs And my girls will lose remotes. Like I, one of these days I'm going to find like this giant cache of Roku remotes. There'll be like 30 of them there, but yeah, with all the- <laughs> yeah, but they couldn't find the remote and the TV couldn't get turned off. Like they didn't know how to turn off the TV. And my <laughs> wife is like, I don't know. There's no buttons. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh my goodness a lot of the newer TVs, if they do have a button they've got like just one button on the back and that turns it on yeah but like, 
it's weird. TVs yeah. are definitely better, but different. So much has changed. So much has changed since the since the days of the Saturday morning cartoon. I, I'm just looking here through a list of like cartoons from the eighties. And uh, I mean, Pryor's place, Richard Pryor had a Saturday morning show for kids. <laughs> Every- Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Who's that? He's a comedian. Richard Pryor's a comedian. Oh, okay, cool. Known for being and- edgy and offensive um, in his comedy. Typically. Oh, so and him- that was in the seventies and eighties that he was considered edgy and offensive. Yeah. So imagine by today's standards. Yeah. <laughs> show. Uh, but I mean, Mr. T had a cartoon. Yeah, of course he did. Mr. I remember Mr. T's cartoon. Like that's I where remember. I Mr. T from. Everybody would talk about the A team. I knew him from his cartoon. And his cereal. Well, yeah. Which was not very Which good. you would eat as you watched the cartoon on Mr. Saturday morning. Cereal. Let's like, and not that we're talking about cereal, but there was a certain flavor of cereal that anytime they had to put a promotional cereal together, it was the same thing, just in a different shape. Like Mr. Yes. T cereal, Batman cereal, yes. WWF cereal, like all of it was the same color and flavor. It was just a different shape. I don't know what that flavor is, but that's what Mr. T cereal was. Now, is it me? And maybe I'm just misremembering because it's been so old. But did it all taste like King Vitamin? Um, I don't know what King Vitamin tastes like. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay. I'm just old. But, but, it made, but they all had the same taste. So it's very possible. They did. And sometimes they throw marshmallows in it. Ah, like with yes. The yeah. C3PO cereal or mm-hmm. yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. And they always seem to have a cereal that would tie in with those cartoons. Mm-hmm which I think was awesome as a kid. It's and great you had marketing, to have it. though. It's great marketing it because, I mean, at the top of this episode, we were just talking about cereals that we would eat while watching Saturday morning cartoons. Yep. It, yeah, in the 80s and, and 90s, I think, um, especially in the 80s, it was all about, like, marketing everything and tying it all together. Like, Star Wars really blew that open with toys. and Oh, yeah. Well, and all of that. And so everything kind of tried to do that. Um, and that's why you had shows like GI Joe and transformers and he man and Thundercats that were really shows that were designed to do one thing. And that was to sell toys. Some of them were better than others. Like transformers was better than Thundercats quality wise. But like, honestly, if they were introducing a new character, it was because that character was going to be on toy shelves soon. And they just wanted yep. you to, I mean, Ninja Turtles was the same thing. Every time they brought on a new character, a new mutant, it was because, hey, we're going to sell this toy and we want you to... And you saw it on TV, so then you had to go buy it. They want you to come up with new vehicles, new hideouts, like whatever. And Ninja Turtles is an interesting one because that started as a comic book. Yep. And if you've read the old like black and white comics, they are not like the cartoon. I mean, yep. Shredder gets decapitated in the first issue. Spoiler alert. But it was like 1983, so you should have read it by now. Oh, of course. Yeah. But well, you've had, if you were really interested, you would have read it by now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they decapitate the main villain from the cartoon in, in issue one. It's like, where do you go from here? But yet... The, somehow they managed to to milk it for what like eight seasons or nine seasons something like that well it, i mean so many cartoons were like that and like you talked about priors yeah place. how does that work as a kid's cartoon um ghostbusters is like that like i remember watching the cartoon as a kid and then watching the movie and like now i watch the movie and i'm like why would anybody ever show this to their kids because there's just but kids don't get most of the stuff in there. So it's no, bad. they don't. <laughs> yes, but I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing. Um, I do want to just mention again, X-Men, uh, Spider-Man, Batman, the anim- animated series are probably three of the best cartoons that have ever been made. 
I yeah, like- ever ever been made. Um, Rugrats was a good one on Saturday mornings. Rugrats. Oh, um, I love that show. That that's more your speed there, Marley. Or yeah, t- age wise. Sorry, <laughs> more more your demographic. Uh, I knew what you meant. <laughs> but but I had a I had a younger sister who was 13 years younger than me, and so a lot of these cartoons I was able to sit down and watch. You know, as mm. as a teenager and as, as an older kid, without feeling guilty, uh, because you know that just wasn't cool back in the day. But now cartoons, I mean, they're they're so mainstream. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. I love it. I know there's so so many more like. <sighs> Because I I would cycle through Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, and Cartoon Network on the regular, you know, and like all of, I feel like, okay, yes, like I feel like nowadays, like TV is like, we're in such a golden age of television, but even like back then, like late 90s, early 2000s, maybe, I mean, I'll even throw in the 80s, you know, in there too, but like, there were some really quality shows that came out of those um, time periods too, though. And, and oh, like yeah. we've, we've talked about, like a lot of them have held up and a lot of them have not, yeah. <laughs> but it's just, it's so much fun. Like I, I love the nostalgia with all of it too. Like it was actually really fun to go back and look at the one Saturday morning, like on this wiki page, I was like, Oh my gosh, I, what, what is that show? I've never even heard of that. <laughs> or just, you know, Various, various musings. And it's interesting because, uh, you know, I've complained a lot over the years how Hollywood is out of ideas. And you could start to see it even back then, you know. Oh, Flintstone Kids, Muppet Babies. I mean, so many of these shows that that we watched as kids and uh, that I watched as kids, they were just a reboot of something that was done in the 60s or 70s. Uh, That's true. Because they had no no new ideas. Oh, let's make them babies. So. <laughs> yep, some of those ideas were. That's okay. And they they were good. It's yeah. true. Mo- for the most part. For, I don't know. I I mean, speaking of Scooby Doo, like I feel like the uh Scrappy Doo or whatever that one was called. That I personally was like, I don't I don't care for this show. I'm just Scrappy gonna watch Doo was the- terrible. I'm just going to watch the original Scooby-Doo and it's going to be fantastic. And I'm, it, I'm going to love it. Yep. Scooby-Doo, where are you is like one of the greatest cartoons ever made. And it yes. still holds up. It still holds up. It's still oh, fun to totally. watch. I've never been a big Scooby-Doo fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you're just missing out, Jake. It's not that I haven't watched Scooby-Doo. I've watched it. It's just, I, never really enjoyed it but i'm glad that you guys like scooby-doo and i'm glad other people like scooby-doo <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic but it's just never been yeah so That's okay like and when i found out that he's supposed to be a great dane he is the fattest ugliest great dane i've ever seen <laughs> well look at his diet man that's true yeah just look and at, I don't look think at what he, they feed that thing. Okay, yeah, but look, and he doesn't really get a lot of like, like they don't take him for walks, so of course he's gonna bulk up. They he just take him for runs through haunted houses, back and forth through the doors. <laughs> oh, jeez! Oh, it is fun to go back and revisit these. I agree, Marley. Like there is a lot of nostalgia there, and even just thinking back to the experience of Saturday morning cartoons and how much fun it was to just like, that's what you look forward to on Saturday morning was I'm going to get up, spend three or four hours just watching cartoons. And it just made your whole weekend. Like Mm -hmm. it's the best way to start it out. Um, And it like, I'm glad that there's so much content for my kids to choose from and to stream and to view, but I still feel like there's just something that I feel like they're missing out because they don't have that same experience or don't have that same opportunity to, you know, this is what Mm -hmm. we're looking forward to. This is what we're going to (laughs) watch. Scheduled, scheduled programs. (laughs) 
And if you missed it, you missed it. Too bad. Yep. Yeah, nothing was worse than like you missed an episode of your favorite show and then you had to hear about it at school and like all your friends were like, yeah, that was such a great episode. And you're like, man. Especially because you forgot to pop in the VHS tape and record it. Or the VH te- VHS tape was full because yep. you already recorded all of your other shows or mom recorded mash or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyways, but I love mash. <laughs> I don't know. At, I didn't ever at watch any it. given moment. Uh, somewhere in the world mash is on TV right now. Oh, I guaranteed. Like, it doesn't matter. I mean, any time there is somewhere that is airing MASH. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a good show. But when I was a kid, uh, it was funny you say mom would put in the VHS to record MASH. When I was a kid, uh, my dad would watch reruns of MASH all the time. And I just remember thinking, this is the most boring, weird show I've ever seen. But now it's it's one of my favorite shows of all time. It's just brilliant. But <laughs> this isn't our favorite sitcoms episode, Marley. That's on a different Although, podcast. We should do that because I'm sure nobody has ever done that before. Oh, wait. Yeah, Cut Cutscenes scenes and Cupcakes just had their favorite sitcoms, what, two, three weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, <gasps> we shared our um, a few of our, our top favorite uh, TV shows in the comedy genre. Yes. So if you want to find out what Marley likes on television, that's not yeah. cartoon related. That's no. an episode for you to check out. And we plan to do other genres too. When we, when we uh, need to come up with a side mission episode. <laughs> right. But the way Zoner just said that, if you want to find out what Marley's into, <laughs> just came across really creepy and i just it it wasn't meant to be i don't think but it was funny it was and i i I enjoyed it as i said that (laughs) but yet i know who i am (laughs) it's fine i was so i was it was all good yep it was fun (laughs) kind of like Um, that episode that was a fun episode so go listen to it because it's a good one yeah check out cutscenes and cupcakes yeah, we're pretty cool. Uh, they are pretty cool. All right. Yeah. That's all the time we have. If you have feedback for us, you want to let us know what your favorite cartoon is, Saturday morning cartoon, you can do it by sending us an email at feedback at solandroids.com. If you're too yes. young to use email, you can also comment on our social media posts and tell us what your favorite Saturday morning cartoon was. Uh, we always love to hear from you uh, and yeah, if you want to know where you can find us on social media, look, here's all of our usernames and everything. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Just, just look for Stolen Droids. That's right. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Tune in next week to see if Colin will be back. Maybe. Don't <laughs> okay. count on it. Bye. Bye. Bye.